Edmund Cartwright was born on April 24, 1743 in Nottinghamshire. He was the son of a landowner. He went to school at Oxford University and began a career in the church, eventually leaving to seek other aspirations to become an adventurer. In 1784, Cartwright visited Richard Artwright's conspinning mills in Derbyshire, and was inspired to construct a similar machine for weaving. He was criticized by many who thought that such a complicated procedure would be impossible to automate. Cartwright ignored these comments, and with a complete inexperience of the field, he began work. The first power loom, patented in 1785, was completely crude, but improvements were made in later versions. Cartwright then established a factory in Doncaster for his looms, but his inexperience of industry and commerce meant that the factory never became much more than a testing site for new inventions. In 1793, he went bankrupt and closed the factory. A Manchester company purchased 400 of his looms, but the factory was burnt down, most likely from an arson attack. Deeply in debt, Cartwright moved to London in 1796. Here he worked on other invention ideas including interlocking bricks and incombustible floorboards, but none proved workable. In 1809, however, the House of Commons awarded Cartwright 10,000 euros, which is about 2.3 million dollars in today's money, in recognition of his national benefits of his power loom. Cartwright died on October 30th, 1823. The following video is of a power loom and how it works. Operating power looms is not an easy job. Operation of weaving in a textile mill is undertaken by a specially trained operator known as a weaver. Weavers are expected to uphold high industry standards and are tasked with monitoring anywhere from 10 to as many as 30 separate looms at any one time. During their operating shift, weavers will first utilize a wax pencil to sign their initials under the cloth or to mark a shift change and then walk along the cloth or the front side of the looms that they tend gently touching the fabric as it comes from the reed. This is done to feel for any broken picks or filler thread. Should broken picks be detected, the weaver will first disable the machine and then undertake to correct the error, typically by replacing the bobbin or filler thread in as many times as possible. They are trained that ideally no machine should stop working for more than one minute, the faster turnaround times being preferred. When operated by a skilled and attentive weaver, looms are not dangerous by themselves. However, there are a number of inherent dangers in the machines, which an inattentive or poorly trained weavers can fall victim to. The most obvious is the moving reed. 
the frames which hold the heddles or the pinch or sand roll utilized to keep the cloth tight as it passes over the front of the machine and onto the doff roll. The most common injury in weaving is pinched fingers from distracted or bored workers, though this is not the only such injury found. There are numerous accident accounts of weavers with long hair getting entangled in the, in the warp itself and having their scalp pulled away from the, their skull or large chunks of their hair pulled off.